Seismic reflection profiles like this image thick sedimentary successions, and these successions are charting the substance history of sedimentary basins. Now an interesting feature about many rift basins like this is that the faulting, which has accommodated stretching that has initiated the basin, is only seen in the lower part of the stratigraphic succession, and it's overlain by a broad sag, shown here by the green package, that simply is superposed on top. So why is this? In this presentation, we'll be exploring the model developed by Dan McKenzie to explain these relationships. The model is tectonically simple. We're going to simply assume that the crust and the mantle lithosphere stretch the same amount, the so-called uniform stretching assumption. And we're going to quantify that stretching through this parameter beta, and beta is simply the original thickness divided by the final thickness. In terms of relating it to strain parameters in structural geology, beta is 1 plus elongation, 1 plus e. So let's see what happens. Here we've stretched by a factor of 1.5, here by a factor of 2. So notice that now the crust and mantle lithosphere are half their original thickness. Let's go further to a beta of 4, and the crust and mantle lithosphere are now a quarter of their original thickness. So that's uniform stretching. So let's look at the consequences of uniform stretching. Here's the pre-stretching, pre-rift state. Here is the situation after rifting, where we generated a sedimentary basin above the stretched lithosphere. Notice also, though, that the base of the lithosphere has risen beneath the basin. That means we have hot upper mantle, hot asthenosphere, upward. So this hot mantle will try to thermally re-equilibrate. And thermal re-equilibration of the upper mantle takes time. We know this from studies of oceanic lithosphere behaviour away from mid-ocean ridges. So this graph, a classical graph, shows how bathymetry away from mid-ocean ridges increases with the age of the lithosphere, showing the cooling history of new plates. You can see that the re-equilibration drives substance, and that substance takes time. So let's do this under our basin. We've re-equilibrated our upper mantle to create a more uniform lithospheric thickness, and that's driven substance under our initial rift basin. So the McKenzie model recognises that rifting is a two-stage thermomechanical process with initial stretching followed by thermal re-equilibration. And in doing so, it'll quantify the subsidence of the composite rift and thermally subsided basin through time. We use the term thermal substance for the post-rift substance stage. So we're going to plot this on a graph which shows basin thickness or substance through time. Let's calibrate what we mean by basin thickness. So there are two scales here on the graph. One is water filled on the left hand side, the other sediment filled. These are different scales because the sediment acts as an additional load to drive substance beyond that of water. So let's plot up this rifting history, which has got a beta factor of 2. So we start off with the syn rift stage about to develop. Here's the rifting stage, where we've thinned the crust and mantle lithosphere equally by a factor of 2. Driven substance, this rifting's taken arbitrarily 20 million years. Then the upper mantle will thermally re-equilibrate, creating this thermal substance phase. You'll notice that the initial substance during rifting is, is very rapid, as is the early part of the thermal phase. During thermal substance, the rate of substance itself decays exponentially through time. Different stretching factors generate different curves. So here we put in a stretching factor of 1.5, so a little less than we've shown in the cartoons, and a stretching factor of 6, significantly more than the cartoons are displaying, generating their own curves. A useful rule of thumb here is you'll notice that the synrift and post-rift stages approximately have the same substance associated with them. The rates are different, but the finite amount of, of substance is approximately the same. And we can add in the 
curves for other stretching factors as well. So the important part of this model, again qualitatively, is that we have a two-phase basin substance model. Sin-rift, where there's active stretching going on. Post-rift, where there's no more stretching, but substance continues because of this thermal re-equilibration of the upper mantle. In our study so far, we've simply looked at the uniform stretching model. In this, the crust is stretched directly above the mantle lithosphere. But what happens if that is offset so that the crust and the mantle lithosphere stretch in different places? In the uniform stretching model, the thermal and synrift basins coincide. In this alternative, more complicated situation, the thermal and synrift basins are offset. So you can imagine you can create a whole series of these more complicated scenarios. But they still have this two-stage process of active stretching followed by thermal subsidence. So that's a brief introduction to the McKenzie model. To summarise, rifting is a two-stage thermomechanical process. It starts off with active extension, which will be accommodated by faulting and stretching of the lithosphere. And this is followed by thermal re-equilibration of the upper mantle, which drives substance. We call this thermal substance. This second substance phase takes 100 million years plus to progress. We've explored this using the uniform stretching model, where subsidence due to active faulting and the subsequent thermal subsidence phase lie one on top of the other. They generate approximately an equal amount of subsidence. Now's the time to add variations.